Hey, today we are sweat about with Estonian director Veika Ulmpo. He has like the coolest movie which is in the cinemas right now. It's like it's so great. It's called The Last Ones. Uh, so maybe there is something you want to tell us about this movie. Uh, you should go and see it. <laughs> That's, That's what I want to tell you. <laughs> Yeah, you should go right now, buy tickets online or in the cinema. Before, yeah, before the, the cinema cinema closes, you know, in the times we live right now. Yeah. Yeah, they can, Anything they can, can happen. They can close the cinemas. Is there any movie that people maybe have to watch prior to watching your movie to enhance the experience? Or maybe there's something they should do? I don't know, are we talking to people who usually watch um, uh, sort of a indie films and so on. Yeah, well, you can choose any type of person. Uh, uh, you know Chonga Savetes' film, films? Uh, well, I know of him. Okay, yeah. so Casavetes was, uh, you know, Chim Charmush, right? Of course. So Chim Charmush uh, said that Casavetes was the father of uh, American indie cinema. Basically, he did his films in the 70s and, uh, and his methods are uh, the ones that I'm trying to al right now also, you know, somehow bring to life. In s Autumn Ball, I saw Cassavetes' poster. Exactly, yeah. yeah. That was the, like a little yeah. nod towards the great master. He's, he's one of my favorites uh, in, in that sense, the way he's working with actors. And, uh, and not only that, I mean, he's just, yeah, he's an exceptional director he has mm -hmm. beautiful films and um, the other might be Satan Tango you know this uh, Bella Tarr film no no it's an eight hour black and white uh, <laughs> shot in uh, uh, <laughs> I, I think I don't know it's 16 shots or how many that's just one film role four minute film role is a shot is a single shot something like Empire or Indie War um, is it like from this new American cinema? No, no, no. Bela Dara is a Hungarian mm -hmm. and the contemporary guy. I think he made this one, uh, I can't remember, in the 90s perhaps? Or it sounds like uh, this movie is very hard to watch. Surprisingly uh, good, actually. It's not so bad. I watched it in cinema and we had like a, f a 10 minute pause in the middle, <laughs> so you could stretch your legs. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a good that's um, a decision. Uh, so, but there's something, uh, it's, not, it's not, my film is not black and white and not mm -hmm. eight hours long and it's not very slow even, but, uh, but the attitude there, um, I think there's some similarities uh, in, mm -hmm. in the idea of uh, the view of humanity, perhaps. Yeah, your movie is very fast paced. Well, kind of, it switches between fast pacing and then slow pacing. Yeah, the, it's the, the, the rhythm. Um, well, it's a very, it's a, it's, it's a crazy thing to say to people, but you know, I think it's, it's a film you can easily watch three times. First time you try to put together a plot and uh, somehow you struggle a little and then, uh, you know, some things might be too nasty for you and so on. Then the second time you see the humor in it, and then the third time you see the rhythms, and uh, and the, the sort of an aesthetic beauty. And uh, yeah, it's <coughs> it was the idea of Robert Bresson, who's, uh, who was the one only single guy whom Tarkovsky admired, in that sense that he said, "Okay, Robert Bresson is above me, that n n nobody else." And uh, and Bresson Bresson's idea was uh, that film, first of all, is a rhythm. It was a painter and he tried to get rid of all of the components that painting has, the composition of the shot, mm -hmm. uh, the acting and all of that. He just reduced everything and then kept the rhythm and said, okay, this is the single thing that is, you know, um, that's essential to a cinematic art. And uh, yeah, and I think it's a very beautiful idea. It's also, it, it is a rhythm, some sort of a, uh, yeah, so. But, but this film, I mean, the last ones, I, I try to really keep on the bottom, on the, on the, on the, everything is there, but the, the first layer is, is a simple story that you can follow that is, that should be uh, fun to watch or 
you know, to a certain extent. Yeah, it, it was very fun to watch. There are a yeah. lot of jokes in the movie. Yeah. And I think like this, um, this cold landscape is very accommodating for comedy because it's very unexpected to hear jokes in mm. this landscape. I think it's a coping mechanism. Uh, the also, when you're dealing with subjects like this, it's, um, you need to laugh well, once in a while. Mm. Or you just uh, become depressed and then, you know, you need uh, perhaps a clinical intervention <laughs> after shooting a film. Why did you choose different cinematographer this time? I know you shot all your movies with Mark Daniel. Um, was it because he won an AC award? Uh, no, it was no, no. Uh, Mart, Mart and we, uh, me, we shot. Uh, we shot the last film we shot together was 2013, The Free Range. Then after that, I shot uh, one film called Rokley uh, at my home in Sarama. 2015 uh, with Eric Paloma and then Eric and uh, Sten Johan Lil who shot this one they're both two young up-and-coming kind of uh, very, very good cinematographers mm -hmm. and uh, that was actually my girlfriend at the time who knew both of them uh, told me to pick Stan Johan because uh, he, he said Eric has had so many chances <laughs> and then I thought okay let's let's try because and I also liked his last film uh, the um, what was the name of the film I'm demented I, I can't remember the name Pavat Misaisi Tsegalo said Days That Confused I don't know if I don't see. Uh, well he shot this film before and I thought, okay, he has a certain style or a feeling towards uh, the subject matter of what he shoots. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that's why. Well, the, the movie is very beautiful. Mm. Yeah. Why did you decide to go with Ariel X? Like it turned 10 years this summer. There was this... Uh, An anniversary. No, we... we uh, uh, we did we did some camera tests. That the, the, the aim was, what what is the camera that we can put in the post production make look uh, like, film. like film, like a, like as much as film. And then this uh, when we tried different uh, uh, different variations, then this was something that mm -hmm. kind of felt okay. This is this is pretty good. Well, you almost fooled me. I was sitting. Like that was that was the aim. That was the aim. That was the aim. I I really wanted to try to make you feel that okay, this is shot on film. But it w it was impossible to shoot it on film because we shot so much, uh, like uh, huge amounts of material, improvisations and all kinds of stuff. There's a lot of improvisations in the movie, like all those yeah. little moments and jokes. Yeah. And yeah. You know, you know what a, what's a, what the best thing in a joke is that it comes to you naturally. Uh, naturally, right? When you're in the middle of something and then you suddenly make a joke and you laugh as well and everybody else laughs because it's, you, you didn't expect it to happen, right? Mm -hmm. So these kinds of things, are from I sometimes had them, sometimes the actors had them and everybody was just firing up and, then, uh, and it just worked perfectly because it's... And I had the vague idea, okay, what, what I want to get from the but in particular, like a scene that needs to happen there. What needs to mm. happen there? And uh, actors at times didn't know. They were just in the role. So they were just going on as if, you know, they're the people. And they interacted between each other as they would, as those people would. And I was just, uh, you know, sometimes shouting from the, behind the camera something like, do that or say that. And then later edited it out, and it worked perfectly. They just really, they really went. Uh, I think they're exceptionally good there. The, the the way they do it, their work. It's really nice. And um, why did you decide to shoot the movie in Finnish? Was it hard communicating on the film set with Finnish actors? Like uh, not at all. No, I I speak Finnish from some time ago already, from the childhood because of the Finnish television. I see. But uh, yeah, it's it's Finland. That's why in Finnish, it's, uh, we shot it in Finland, and then 
It's, it would, would have been strange to shoot it in Estonian with Finnish actors <laughs> <laughs> in Finland. That's true. Um, yeah. How did you did you make like um, like a contest for a perfect lookalike for <laughs> Werner Herzog? Because this dead actor looks exactly like Werner Herzog. Oh my God! I was <laughs> he does, doesn't he? He's, yeah. he's, he looks like a Werner Herzog. You saw him and he was like, "I want this guy in my movie." He's an actually, uh, uh, I, he has been in my two other movies already. He's been in The Autumn Ball, mm -hmm. The Barber in The Autumn Ball. Sulevi Beldola was there as well. And, and also he had a little role in the St. Tony. Mm -hmm. He was Uncle Vanya on the stage mm -hmm. uh, of the theatre mm -hmm. uh, in a bee costume. <laughs> So, so he's been in my films already, and uh, I kind of wanted to dry him out. And he came up with the Indian uh, outlook, mm -hmm. and uh, and but he's just such a good uh, actor. So uh, some strange metamorphosis mm -hmm. took place, and suddenly I thought, oh, it's Werner Herzog. <laughs> I honestly thought it was Werner Herzog for a second. Ah, beautiful. This role would have fit him so much. Absolutely. Yeah, I think. I, unfortunately, I don't know him, so I. I would have asked him to do the role. <laughs> he's acting now, right? He's, he's yeah. doing, he's, he was really good in this Reacher. Yeah, yeah, he was yeah. really good. He likes to go to jungles and all this stuff, so yeah, yeah, too. Yeah. So he would like laugh and he sure. Your movie had a long post-production, like three years almost. Like yeah. Part of this I suspect is the Corona thing, but uh, yeah, well, is there some other reason to that? Well, it, uh, it's... Um, there was an unfortunate uh, incident. The first editor, Walter, uh, got uh, got killed uh, in a very strange, freakish accident, and um, and then we needed to continue with the second editor, and then we started to work. It was almost together after half a year, the first version. Then we dismantled it, and then we went. Uh, with the second version, f another half a year, and then we fine-tuned it uh, for another half a year, and then mm -hmm. it was almost—it was practically finished two years ag the, after the shooting. Mm -hmm. But we s we decided to wait because of all the great festivals, and the, you know, in the spring, and mm -hmm. and then to come out, come out in the spring, and then the corona came, and yeah, it's been. Um, it's been a strange, uh, strange thing, strange wait because the film itself it began. It began. <coughs> so the idea came. Uh, uh, the guys came to me with an idea for nine years ago. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's like um, it's, it's, you know, you're you're what 21. It's half of your life almost. It's like it's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> it's 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 silly. It's uh, it's been crazy in this sense. I can't watch it anymore because I've watched it so many times during the editing yeah. and it's like uh, it's just impossible. I, I watched it in the in the premiere but I don't think I'll ever watch the film again. Like <laughs> yeah, I understand that it's <laughs> completely. Yeah. Yeah. I saw references to both Trier in the movie, to Breaking the Waves with all this machinery and to How the Jack built with caves. But all, but the most uh, you know unexpected reference for me was to I don't know if you put it there for Tarantino's Pulp Fiction with the foot massage. Oh, no no no. I, I'm I'm you know I, I, at this point I, I'm not doing references anymore. I used to do them in the Santoni a lot, but but this is and then you know free range. I try to uh, make it look as if it's kind of a, a Novel Vague film from you know like a french film or you know there's like a formal attempt to, to but this film i i didn't really reference anything i i just we we just went with what's th what's possible to do in this little hut <laughs> and so that was one thing that you can try and rub someone's feet and i think paro came up with it it, it wasn't you know i i wasn't make made well, uh, making a reference speaking. no 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 it and i wasn't the, uh, wasn't referencing anything, and also breaking the waves. I, I, you know, I like the film a lot, but mm. I also we we didn't reference the film. It's just we wanted to get um, this lifelike 
feeling of you know this uh, you know if everything moves fast and uh, you know you're among people then you have this sense of uh, everything being hectic and mm -hmm. um, so we just tried to get this uh, and juxtapose this with the landscapes yeah, yeah. so that was the that was the idea and so that the landscapes would somehow you know uh, uh, even, that. even it out and also kind of a rob people's drama out to somehow that you build these those dramatic moments but then you put them in this landscape and then you say okay they're really tiny there yeah. and it yeah, yeah. And, you, and it puts it exactly it puts it very much in the perspective and and also gets you some sort of a relief from it and uh, because you you become entangled with them and um, yeah so what was the first movie you fell in love with? Oh, that's a difficult question. Tarzan. I think the old Tarzan, you know, the Johnny Weissmuller, black and white. Haven't seen it. Why? Why? Ah, you haven't seen it. It's I, I just completely, you know, he, he, he was just running around climbing trees and uh, you know having monkey friends <laughs> I just you know as a little kid this was just completely blew my mind I was I'm just completely um, I, I went so crazy because also it came from I, I came from Sarema right we didn't have Finnish TV mm -hmm. and so uh, when we visited with my parents in Tallinn uh, then we got to see also Finnish TV and they ho had all kinds of films and programs there. You know, the Knight Rider. Uh, the, you know, it's like a talking car. You know, there's like a, like a silly guy was, who has a hairy chest. And, uh, and he's like... like 70s hero. It's like, a, it's like an 80s show, I think. Uh, uh, well, you should check it out. It's very funny. And he has, a, he has this... Uh, he has this talking car and they, they're fighting crime. <laughs> so I was, I complete, I just blew me away. And I, w I was praying to God. And when the, the first episode was one and a half hours long and, and I, I went, you know, there's like these, uh, pause, like these ad pauses in, bet in between, right? So I went to make a, sandwich for myself and I was praying to God, I was, I was kneeling down, I was praying, please make it so that it's, it's, it's a series, <laughs> that this won't stop because I was just so, <laughs> so happy about it and uh, yeah. It's pretty, it's crazy, that's a good show, <laughs> talking cars, <laughs> fighting crime, talking cars. <laughs> And he also he had a, he had a lady mm -hmm. friend in every episode, a different lady friend. But he al always only kissed because it was for kids, you know. The show. Yeah. But he was it's he obviously was like a ladies' man. Yeah. Yeah. And and it jumped, you know, uh, the car jumped. Uh, it, it was a, it had some like a no, like a button the turbo boost, and when it hit that, then it, the car went like, uh, yeah, it's like, uh, and 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 Tarzan. So mm -hmm. when we came to visit, I I saw this Tarzan first time, and I just it somehow you know it just mm -hmm. smacked me over the head. Um, yeah. Uh, were there any movies you watched with your parents? Uh, like, did you grow up in a family who loved cinema? Were your parents talking about cinema? No, no, no. My, my family watched TV. Mm -hmm. Basically, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you feel guilty falling asleep at the movies? I never fall asleep. Never, fall, not no, once. No. no. Uh, in, because I, I don't sleep too well. Uh, and that's because that's the reason probably. I know a guy, uh, Estonian director, Jaak Kilmi, who falls asleep every time. <laughs> Even if he likes the film, he falls asleep in the cinema. <laughs> so I think. Uh, so so for I, him, I, never one movie ended. Yeah. <laughs> it's like he just makes films sometimes, but he, he never sees them. <laughs> but 
Uh, I How don't. How does he see his movie? I don't know. I don't have to. You have to ask. I I don't know. It's it's a very strange thing. It's, it's a very strange thing to have as a movie director. Maybe he falls asleep and then when he wakes up, editor already finished the movie. Yeah, I don't. It's it's a tricky thing, but I never fall asleep in the film. What do you think are the best movies for a person to get into Estonian cinema? What do you mean? Uh, like if a person who doesn't really watch Estonian cinema and he wants to learn about it, mm. what should he start with? Well, there's a famous film, you know, the, um, uh, by Grigory Kromanov, uh, Kromanov uh, who um, is the... In Estonian, it's Hukkunu the Alpinisti of Tell. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, you seen it? No, I've heard about it. Well, there's it. one film to see. Uh, also, Grigory Gromanov's another film, What Happened to Andres Lapetels, which is a sort of a, like a tale in, from the 60s, I think, a tale uh, of a Soviet, um, some sort of apparatchik, uh, who used to be, who's just somehow grown apart from his friends, and uh, it's mm -hmm. like a, this, it's a very good film. It's, um, because he chose the career in a way. Uh, so not a woman, but career. Uh, no, not also not friends. Mm -hmm. It's like he has he has a wife there, but but he's just solely, you know, somehow. Uh, you don't see or, that in or the or movies often. Usually, people choose girls in the movies. Yeah, like well, it's it's a different thing. It's at that time the films uh, they had different aim. You know, they mm -hmm. they also tried. To somehow make people work more, make people also understand something, and uh, so yeah, I think Grigory Kromanov's films are good, and then there's an Estonian lady, uh, there's uh, like a female director, Leida Laios, who has made some some films noteworthy, and uh, from right now I think Rainer Sarnet is, is good. Yeah, and he's a friend of yours. Too. Yeah, he's a good, he's a good friend. Of, of, used to be a very good friend, but now since uh, I'm so successful, <laughs> we're not <laughs> so good envious. friends anymore. <laughs> no, we're good friends actually. Yes, well, no. Yeah, I know you run the, the company together, Homeless Bob. You can do it together. Uh, yeah, he's also work. He's making films from under the wall, Homeless Bob. I know you played in the first one of the first Estonian trash metal. Band, Sleeper Messiah. Uh, what kind of experiences you brought from that into your movies? Um, I think that mm, making films is a sort of in. If you if you love music, then it's a good thing to help you because it's a flow. Every movie is a sort of a flow. So if you understand a flow. Then you're like you understand 50% of the f of what it is, because mm -hmm. what what catches you, and I mean if you follow the flow, in terms of you have a taste in music, let's say, um, and uh, you just follow your taste within this flow, and then everything works out. So I think for me at least this is the understanding that that comes from that, and also I'm a really lousy guitar player. And uh, that's uh, that's a good thing also because it's um, maybe I wouldn't have maybe it, because I, I dropped the band and uh, because I saw it okay it's pointless because I can't play and I will never play good well so, so but but there's this frustration also and you need that that also that the okay thing, things didn't work out and then you carry that frustration uh, with you until it explodes in some sense and then something happens and um, the release of that fr frustration is also good I think so that's I th uh, what at least in my case I don't know how s different people make things in a different way but you have to have a certain amount of things not working out mm -hmm. and struggling and then you just push it and you push it and you push it and at what point at this it gives up and, and somehow you and you push through it, and then suddenly something happens. It's it's always like this. Um, so it's a, it's a tricky thing to try and make yourself 
you program yourself pretty much into okay even if it's you know it seems like it's fucked up I'm, I will go on and you just go on and you go on and you go on and uh, and then eventually you know something breaks through this is my experience it's um, I guess it's I like that for everyone like if you want to get something cool you have to fight for it you can just uh, yeah, and uh, it's 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 never a it's never an easy thing. All kinds of very strange things can happen when you uh, well, when you make a film. So many people there. Uh, well, you have a lot of people on the film set who can tell you if something's going wrong. Yeah, and and they t and also they can also start to feel that. Okay, things are going really to a wrong direction, and then you still have to be able to say no. But I think it's it's right because you know I, this is the direction we need to go. And then you know, at one point they might all be against you, in the sense that no, no, we're not going to go. And then you say, okay, then you can leave, but you know, I'm going to go there. Does it happen <laughs> to you? Does it happen to you? You're not not so drastically, but there there has been some. You know, it, at point at some point you need you need to. It's, it's, I'm not a psychologist and I don't know why some people act like this, but there's a, there's a group thing. And if you don't get the group to, to go with you, mm -hmm. there will be another person who steps up and becomes a sort of a leader in the group. And then this other person will start to compete with you. And this is very a natural thing to do in a group. It's like, an, like the animals we are. And uh, so you have to be able to See, I'm the director. No, no, no. The, the yeah, that, so, so that I will be. It's, it's not even like because it can also become an ego thing. Mm -hmm. You don't want it to become an ego thing. Uh, but uh, you just have to understand that. Okay, we <laughs> we are, we have gathered at this point to make the film. You know the way I, I want to make it, or have an idea to make it. Mm -hmm. And everybody needs to be on the board. Needs to agree with it. And if they're not. And sometimes if, you know, they're hired, just maybe even for a little bit, and their attention is, you know, going, uh, then you have to, you know, get them aboard or uh, ask them to leave. Because in this particular thing, when, especially when you shoot, every single person needs to be on board. Mm -hmm. And David Lynch has talked about this. Uh, uh, because sometimes he said, when with a big crew, you turn around and then you see a guy you, and then you're in the middle of the shooting and you're just you're shaking all over and you just oh, what's going on there and then you turn around and there's this guy you know with these pockets everywhere and he's just chewing gum and he doesn't give a shit at all and then everything just goes out the window it's it's not going to work so so yeah so it's you need to uh, but especially it is very important to have that uh, when, when you shoot and there are different dynamics off the shoot, you know, that when you're just, while you're, the shooting period goes on, but you don't actually shoot, then there's a different dynamic that you also need to follow, but you don't need to be so controlling of it, but you need to get everyone abo abroad, aboard. Yeah. After the morals, like, the morale. Yeah, also, yeah, the so, the exactly, so that every, everybody needs to uh, understand that they're doing something exceptional. It will work out, it is a good thing that they're doing. It, and it's it's because I've been also on the f on the film crews and on the sets where it's not like that, mm -hmm. and it's a disaster. And it will never work out. It, nothing good will come out of it because also the, the actors will understand it somehow, even if they don't. Mm -hmm. They would feel it. They would feel it, and even if they don't see, you know, somebody just not being with them, they they can feel that there's not something, and they don't give hundred percent, and it's and and you've got nothing. Mm -hmm. So there's there's this thing, the some some little word of advice that I can I can share. I, I, I'm going to remember <laughs> it. Uh, now, what advice would you give to young filmmakers? I don't. It's a different. I I don't know. It's like uh, which ones? <laughs> like, <laughs> which ones? I can't. I know any, talk to. any people who start out just start out. Uh, be sure that you want to do it. Don't just, you know, and also when you're young, you can get caught in a very superficial things, you know, you I just either admired or you're cool, you have your own crew around you, you know, and you're, you're this cool guy, and then that can 
exactly. somehow backfire in that sense that you start to like this and you think, you know, this is somehow about you. Mm-hmm. It's never about you. It's, it's always about the thing that you're doing at the, this moment. Mm-hmm. And this should be it. And then when, you, when the thing is done, you can let go and, uh, and it's, it, you, sh- you shouldn't ever think that it's, it's in any way about you. That you're this, you know, a very particular and important person on this planet, <laughs> because you know you you know might you might be helpful to certain people sometime, but it, it shouldn't be about you all the time. It's, it's it's about art. It should be about the stuff that you you think that okay, this is an important thing to do, right? Let's say there's a, like this is the thing that you're doing somehow, and then you gather people around and you then you all agree, okay, this is something to do, and this is a very good thing to do. We should do this, mm-hmm. and then you do it, and then that's about this, and it's never about you. But when you when you gather people around to watch, as you know, you do it. I'm going to do it. You, you know, you observe, yeah. and then it's going to be a very uh, embarrassing failure at one point, I think, you know, because it's tempting also to think that way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's easy. Mm? It's easy to fall into this trap. It's very easy to fall, and many, many people fall into it, I think. And I have fall, f- fallen into it at one point or another also. And also yeah. uh, what was your first date with you? I suspect you went on a lot of dates to the cinema. Surprisingly, um, I didn't. Mm-hmm. I didn't have that many dates when I was in my teens. <laughs> <laughs> and and the ones I, I had, I was always so drunk and there's not there was nothing no cinema there. <laughs> <laughs> That's completely understandable. In your movies there are a lot of apartments and houses, but I rarely see any carpets in them. Is there some kind of trauma from when you worked as a carpet sale? <laughs> I'm not gonna put any carpets in the movies. <laughs> No, <laughs> no. It's a practical reason, I think, mostly. Uh, carpet, uh, you can spill stuff on it and it's expensive to get it out. But <laughs> when you shoot a film, it's a, it's a, somehow uh, happens to sometimes be a dirty business. So there's like, um, yeah, I think that's it. Not, um, I don't have a... Um, I didn't even remember the carpet salesman thing. You brought it up. So, I don't so you tried to forget it. I have not tried. I have forgotten it. <laughs> well, it's on your website, the place where I found it. So. Uh, it's like, uh, yeah. I wasn't so. look, looking for embarrassing things. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it was. Uh, it it <laughs> was the. It was a case. Yeah, it was uh, when I was twenty or something. Mm-hmm. How do you make art in lockdown? This coronavirus. I don't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay.